is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the show. Brent Wallace alongside Bobby Ryan and Jason York, uh, everybody's favorite uh, defenseman and right winger. I should have just maybe done that a little bit better and smoother. Yeah. Uh, boys, it's the end of August, which means last weekend for the cottages. Everybody's got to start to pack up and head to the rinks. It's hockey season almost. Yeah, it means I got to see your mugs a little more often. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ray of sunshine. You get mad at me, Yorkie, but that's not the ray of sunshine that we expect from Bobby. <laughs> oh, well. I had to leave the golf course. Bob, more, more, more shows, but a little shorter. So there's, there's a win there yeah, for you. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of quick hitters, eh? Well, I will let hitters. you know how long the show is going to go. <laughs> All right. We have the record. We have the record for longest show. You and I, when we host it, we'll be going an hour thirty. Yeah. Way too long. Way too long. Yeah. So <laughs> I try to do a show at fifty minutes. Like, whoa, wrap it up, Wally. Yep. Come on, Wally. Let's go. Chop, chop. <laughs> All right, well, let's get right to it then, since you guys are so eager to uh, get on with the weekend. A um, couple of things before we get into I want to discuss the bottom uh, six, if you will, the Ottawa Senators. But before we do that, uh, a couple of things. One, uh, if you haven't seen the news, women's hockey, professional hockey coming back, uh, six-team league, and it'll begin with Ottawa being part of the original six, which is exciting. Ottawa, if, if you don't know, in 1990, hosted the first Women's World Championship. Uh, then they hosted again in 2013, I believe it is. Uh, and then last year, I think it was last year with the Dream Gap Tour, they were at uh, the Steve Eisman Arena, and they, they had great crowds. Ottawa has very much supported women's hockey, and I, you know what? I'm excited to see them. Um, it's good to see women's hockey being put on a professional level and getting some support. For sure. So, uh, Ottawa's always – well, I'll tell you a story about my dad, a quick story about my dad. He was one of the first competitive women's slash girls hockey coaches here in the city back – Back in the late seventies, when it wasn't that popular, my dad coached. He never coached me; coached my sister. So I used to, I used to go out with my sister's team for extra ice time. So I would uh, oh, I'd, be out, I'd be out with the girls wheeling around with the old team team hockey jacket on the the bucket. That's where I got my extra ice. But no, it's good, Wally. Um, but now it's time for people to put up. Yeah. So everybody that's wanted wanted women's hockey, start buying tickets. Because for in order for it to succeed, people have to buy tickets. So now it's time for people to to, to put some to put their uh, you know the people that have wanted it have yep. to have to have to buck up. So I think it can work, and uh, it's exciting. Um, but people now have to support it. Yeah, I agree. I think it works it's, in Ottawa uh, without question. I was going to say I don't think you need to worry about the Canadian cities a ton. It's the American cities. Um, what, what are the three again? Detroit was it? So Buffalo? Minnesota, New York, and Boston, if I'm not mistaken. It, was it Boston or Buffalo? I, I can't remember. Um, but nonetheless, those are the cities that you, you need to draw some crowds yeah. in because the Canadians people, I mean, they're going out to watch hockey no matter what. And I don't know about women's hockey in Nashville is better than youth kids um, male. It's unbelievable down here how good the programs are. So um, there is an interest in it and I'm excited to see it take off because it feels like for years we've been trying to get that platform for them to, to play in the appropriate setting, um, where leagues take off and they don't really necessarily, uh, gain any traction, but it seems like everybody's behind it this time. So I'm excited mm -hmm. for them. I'll, uh, I'll be paying attention. I like what yep. they're doing too. Shorter, shorter season, right? Well, was it 12 games? games? Uh, sorry, 24, I think awesome. 12 and 12. Really um, smart. Really yeah, smart. You don't have to play your 12 games at home. You can have neutral site games as part of that as well. Well, it's it's really smart because if it's like anything, right? People want something that, that you can't get that often. It's like everyone wants to get in the restaurant that's busy. So give less. Less yeah. is more. That, that That's why sometimes in NHL teams, it's like it, it is a huge commitment to go to 41 home games. That's a massive commitment. So I think this is really smart. Yeah. Less is more. Um, and that way you'll, I, I think you'll, you'll have a better chance of getting more people out to the games. 
Tell uh, tell Wally less is more when he wants to take us to three. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, hey, dirty secret, Bob. There's a dirty secret out there. I read, I read heard, your contract is all I got to say. I heard, <laughs> you know I didn't yeah. read that. Yeah. I've, heard, I've, heard, I've heard four. I've heard four I can't shows. afford the buyout, by the way, in your contract either. So you gotta, you're fulfilling the whole thing. <laughs> uh, if, oh, and if, one more thing. Uh, if you didn't see it last night, I don't know if you saw the in Nebraska the women's volleyball the largest sporting event in women's uh, sorry the largest event in women's sporting history. Uh, I saw 90, the intro. Thousand people, yes, unbelievable. At, yes, so uh, volleyball is a big deal in Nebraska, but it was wild to see ninety thousand people packed into that stadium. It was it's awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'll tell you what though. Uh, speaking of women's sports, I I'm a I'm a big guy that loves women's tennis. I'll watch women's tennis over men's tennis any day of the week. More rallies. Um, it's just men's. It's like big bomb point over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, so, I yeah. agree with you, actually. Yeah. Women's tennis. Phenomenal. Very good. All right. Uh, so congratulations to the Ottawa franchise. We're looking forward to it. Moving on. Uh, the Champions League over in Europe. I don't know if you've seen the new rules. I will. Uh, three big ones. I'll read them out to you. A team will remain shorthanded even if the opposing team scores a goal. A minor penalty will be served even if a goal is scored while delayed while delayed penalty is pending. And if a shorthanded team scores, the minor penalty against will end. Oh. Uh, Yorkie, you being the veteran on the group here, do you like these rules? Would you say no to any of them? I think they're fine. Mix it up a little bit. Shake it up a little bit. Why not? Tweak tweak the rules a little bit. I, I, I think it's innovative. I don't mind them whatsoever, and it's going to create some more offense. Uh, more offense is always good, right? That's what people want. People want goals. So, I, hey. I figured the defenseman would be a little against it. Offensive defenseman, I'll have you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say that it's an – it's. All well and good till you're the guy in the box serving a five minute major right. for something and they score four banger on you. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> and you're like, I can't get out of here yet. Well, I guess you would serve the whole five no matter what. But yeah, anyway, talk, um, talk about punitive. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm I'm just a traditionalist. I don't I don't love them. But see, I, I like uh, I like the fact that if it, the, I never liked the de- if you scored on a delayed penalty, it didn't count. You still had the penalty. You should still have to serve the penalty. Um, I'd be OK with that. I Yeah, that yeah, one but- I'm OK with. But they got I don't to put, mind. But they got it, to put six guys on the ice, so they had like a kind of a power play for two seconds. Most I would like time. to know the number of delayed penalty calls there are that mm-hmm. result in a goal. It's not very many. <laughs> it can't be many. No. You know what? Don't have a delayed penalty then. Just yeah. whistle it down and start the power play. One um, thing at a time here. Let's get let's get rid of that stupid puck over glass rule first. Oh my get god. Get rid of that first, and then there's we'll a defenseman. The there's hey. a defenseman for you. That that's <laughs> you and Joe DePenta, buddy. Get around the net and just wing it at the winger's head. Your no, I thought listen. you were tape to tape. I'm tape to tape, Bob. You <laughs> love me. I'd be right right in your wheelhouse every time. I gotta <laughs> I gotta look up some of these old school Jason York clips. <laughs> hey, I'm on I'm on Yermer. I'm on the best of Yermer Jagger's goals. I think I get oh. burned for like goal eight on. on oh the goal. man. I gotta look it up, Gavin. You've got some work to do uh, as we get hey, into the show. See that's the dagger. It's on there. Ooh, it's not pretty. Uh, and, and if a shorthanded team scores, the minor penalty against will end. Do uh, do we like this? No, I don't. Does I it mean... does it penalize the power play for trying to be creative? No, I, because I think you're gonna see more guys take chances when they're short that are going to lead to some serious odd man rushes like four on twos the other way and things like mm-hmm. that. Guys are going to miss the net and rim it out. Um, no, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think you're creating more offense in that spectrum, right? I don't think you're, okay. you're creating more offense. So I, I don't like that rule. I, I think it's kind of cheesy, but okay. it might work. People might love it. You know, who knows? Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, would you ever be on the ice killing penalties if that were the case? I only killed for about two years in the league um, until Bruce Brujo came. I'll actually say this. Corey Perry and I were killing a lot of penalties. And Bruce came in, I think it was his second game with us. And Corey and I, had ha- we had both scored a couple shorties. We had both, I think it was like 19 times we were out there. We were keeping track because we were like, we're defensive specialists. Uh, we, <laughs> hadn't given, we haven't given up a goal against. We were all fired up. We were actually loving the position and like and, and playing it. And then they scored against us in our second game. And Bruce was like, no more. 
those two are not going out there again. And we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's slow down. And he's like, I'm going to play you guys 21 minutes a night. We're like, okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's too good for either. Bobby, uh, no. you had 21 shorthanded goals. Did I really? Yeah. And six of them in one season in Ottawa. Yeah. Or is that shootouts? Is that that shootouts? Be, oh, yeah. that's why. I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's why. That makes much more sense. You had three. That's much more. Oh, okay. Now okay. it makes more I was sense. Like, yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Hey. I think that all three. Well, it was S H O G, and I was like, oh, that must be shoot, uh, yeah. shootout goals. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Uh, we can go back. Okay. Just like, we'll delete this out of the show. I'm looking at the uh, master, Tim, but I don't see a Selkie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just picturing Bobby just burning down for that for, turnover. He's gone. Yeah. Straight, they were all breakaways, all three of them, <laughs> all three breakaways. Yeah, I turned the afterburners on from the far blue line. Nice. <laughs> your your last shorthanded goal is 2011-12 season. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, now that we've covered that, um, okay. Before we get to the uh, the sense chatter, I want to get into. Uh, we're gonna do our ad reads so that everybody's happy. You know what, guys? I'm just gonna take them and get them done. Today. Yeah, do them. Okay. okay. Do it. Um, so, but Yorkie, you are a big trivia guy. So you mm. may want to pay attention for this. Okay. Uh, as you know, Botano is our uh, presenting sponsor. Mm -hmm. This Saturday, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, they have what's called uh, trivia. So it's uh, true or false trivia. Um, and that uh, basically you, you don't have to, you don't have to bet. You just, you can go in and enter it on Botano.ca. It's a $500 prize pool. So if you get seven of 10 right, you get to win $500 in golden chips. So um, go to botano.ca, set up, uh, and log in and go uh, on the casino side, and you can test your knowledge of live NFL trivia, uh, which starts next Thursday, by the way. Next Thursday? Yeah. Damn, next I Thursday. Draft. I got a fantasy draft next week. I got to get prepared. I thought Bob used to run. Didn't you used to run the Ottawa Senators pool? Yeah, yep. I was, I was in charge of it for a couple of years there. I got a I got a good one coming next week with a bunch of ex senators players, some some San Jose players. Um, we got our draft Monday, and it's a big buy in, so the boys are taking it serious. Oh, all right. Um, and also uh, from BEI, oh, our good friends. Bob, what's the uh, buy in? What's the buy in? Wait, I'm curious. Hang, hang on one second. Okay. Okay. Just hang on. Uh, <laughs> BEI is Bonisher Excavating Inc. The heavy civil heavy civil general contractors look they're hiring uh, but they also do equipment rentals aggregate topsoil sales uh, crushing and screening reminder bobby when you are on the highway and you come up to a construction zone to slow it down thank you very much uh, go to bonshareexcavating.com or give them a call 613-432-1120 uh, for all your aggregate needs okay now you can get back to your uh, nfl pools Good. just a, it's a thousand dollar buy-in i got eight guys nice, so, nice. yeah big pot Waiver uh, waiver wire pickups. Yeah, we have to limit Andy though because he just sits on there all day long. So <laughs> <laughs> just we call it. He's, he's got nothing to do. Yeah, perusing so. through the scrap heat at night, eh? Just yeah, we there. got a good group though. Tierney, uh, Tierney, Colin White, Ryan Dezingle, myself, Andy, um, Devin Setaguchi, good buddy of mine from San Jose, and uh, Jason Demers popped in. So we're gonna have a good fun. We're gonna have a fun year. I, Is he not I, former I, Ottawa '67, Jason Demers? Oh, I couldn't uh, tell you. I gotta look that up. Maybe I've been doing I've been doing the same pool with my high school buddies since 2005. Gosh, I'm my draft year. That's yeah, a long, that's a long time ago. Wow. We uh, we do it at the golf club and we determine there's 12 of us actually going up to 14 this year. We have a putt off to determine the draft picks worst through uh, whoever has the whoever sinks it or whatever. It's a long putt. So if you have the best putt, you get first overall. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's great. Uh, how's Chris Tierney doing, by the way? Uh, I haven't talked to him a ton other than setting the league up and all that, but, oh, that guy's always good, man. That guy just chills. <laughs> I He's love a that good guy. dude. Yeah. Like I, he was, at, I think he was also at Brady's wedding this summer. But they, um, yeah. He's, yeah, I, he's really well liked. He's, I, I don't think yeah. people got to really know him in Ottawa. And so, uh, they have different opinions of Chris Tierney, but I know he's really well liked by the guys he plays with. Locker room guy for sure. Good, uh, yeah, good room yeah, guy. Incredible, yeah, absolutely incredible. Well, that was, list seems to be like a good room. You got Colin White on there. Yeah, you know, Devin Setaguchi. Um, there's a few guys on that list. 
Yeah, Zinger's in the mix. Call him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah, we got a great group. I talked to Zingle for a while yesterday and I said, when, when are we coming on? He's like, either after I retire or sign, but it's not before. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm either going to go full scorched earth or I'm going to be a boring guest. <laughs> I was like, all right. I'll wait for the retirement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get on to it. So uh, we're to, I think, the 24th, 22nd is the first uh, exhibition game on September. So we're, basically three weeks away. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot. We obviously know the top six is a lock. The bottom six at forward, it seems to be perhaps one spot. Two, if you talk to, about Shane Pinto not being signed. I don't mm -hmm. know if he gets signed before camp starts, uh, gentlemen, as you know with RFAs. And he's right in that spot where he deserves the money and they don't have the money to give him. How flush are they against the cap? Like... They're over. They're over. Yeah, they're, they're right at it. Uh, I don't know what the exact dollar amount is at the moment, but I'll tell you. i got to put the glasses on here. Oh, oh no. York is getting serious. <laughs> I can't see. Yeah. Uh, they I have mean, uh, projected cap space, $895,953, according to Cap Friendly. Okay. So <laughs> Pinto's not signing that. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> So that anyway, that makes Something's it interesting in the center position. Something's got to give. So someone's leaving, like you would, like, or yeah, or they get sent down. They get put on waivers and sent down. But that, that's not likely to happen. See, I and I'm looking at the list here, and you know, specifically the left side. So let's just assume that that yes. Pinto, so Pinto gets done at a number that puts us over the cap, right? Yeah, and if not, I would expect like Rourke Chartier. Uh, probably maybe I don't think Zach or stop truck gets a, he might get a look in training camp. I don't know if he gets a look at the start of the season, but maybe yeah. um, those are the guys obviously at center. Now the board, if people are wondering why it looks the way it does, the two players at each position are basically the locks. And I say that about Parker Kelly, because everybody Parker Kelly has a one way deal. So yeah. unless they put him on waivers or they trade him, that's, that's his spot to lose unless they go to 13 forward. So let's just say there's a spot, at the fourth line left winger position. There's an what? awful lot of left wingers right now looking for a spot. Yeah. Uh, and I'll go through them just to give you guys a chance here. Okay. So uh, Igor Sokolov, we all know, scored his first NHL goal last season. Good friend of the show. Uh, he's played 13 NHL games. He's also an RFA at the moment. Uh, Angus Cruikshank, uh, he missed, I think, all of last season uh, coming back from injury. I think he played at the end, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, Cole Reinhardt played one game last year. I, I think he's fallen now on the depth chart. Ridley Gregg is obviously a guy that there's well yeah. looked at. He plays 20 games. Uh, he's considered perhaps yeah. the front runner to take that spot. And Wally, we need it. We need it. We need an official way in too. With there's no way he's still 163. If he's 163, he ain't making the team. No, he's if, probably if he's 163. He needs to get to Montana's. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, I, I heard just, that's what he's listed at from yeah. uh, Stats Pass. I'm sure he's had a great summer and he's way heavier. Yeah. So, uh, Boko Amama, who they acquired, um, he's, uh, I'll, I'll go a tough guy. He's, and then Roby Arventi, um, his second round pick. I think he, see, to me, he's a top six type winger where I don't see him fitting on a bottom four spot. And then finally, Yuri Schmeckel, who's, this is the interesting story here. He's a guy that's six foot four. They signed him on a one-year deal uh, after the World Championships. Never drafted. He did play in the WHL, but the last couple of years, he has scored uh, 25 and 23 goals, respectively, playing in the uh, Swedish League. So I'm interested to see what he could do, but I still think it's Igor Sokolov's or Ridley Gregg's spot if they uh, can emerge here. Well, we, are we assuming they're going to carry probably just one extra forward? Yeah. Yeah, especially for cap reasons. So there'll exactly. be one, there'll be one extra. Like from what I seen bef last year before Parker Kelly got hurt, Parker Kelly is DJ Smith's kind of player. Yep. I think something has to go horribly wrong at camp for Parker Kelly not to be on this team for opening day roster. I just think this guy, this guy will tear your eyes out for to do what he'll do whatever it takes. He'll fight you. He'll block a shot. He'll put his face in front of a puck. I just think that type of other guys are going to have to play with that type of mentality. I'll take Sokolov, for example. He's, mm -hmm. he's a guy that can score, right? He scores. He's big. He's Binghamton's – or sorry, Belleville's all-time leading goal scorer. 
he's going to have to come to camp with a with a different mindset to hit everything that moves hard on the forecheck goals like yeah it's great if he scores but he's going to have to play a physical style and if he does like it's a lot it's a lot harder to score goals and do that kind of than it is to change your game and be a a guy that finishes every check that plays hard and does everything the coach wants and then eventually you will score goals so if he wants to make the team it's just change your mindset and it's right there for him for sure absolutely yeah, I would agree with that on on a the level for for the shark. I think um, with the top six being the way it is, and those guys being solidified, you're you're looking at you're looking at Sokolov not necessarily having to push out a Parker Kelly, but more like a Kubalik. Um, there, those yeah. guys are a little more interchangeable in the offensive side because you you want a third line with Shane Pinto and Matthew Joseph. You want a shooter. You want a guy that can provide a little offense while being hard on the four check while not getting beat, not losing coverage. Um, and I think Igor has shown that he can do that in, in spurts. The hard part for him is going to be, you know, lessening the offensive instincts a little bit until he gets his feet wet and gets into that position. And then, and then let the offense come as it, as it will later on. Um, I'm interested more in Ridley Gregg than anybody else. Yeah. This is, you know, he's down there on the death chart, but he's a first round pick and first he round is the picks, only first round pick on that list. First round picks get more shots than everybody else. That's just yes, the way it uh, is. Um, he, and he, got and he's great... proven he can play, he can play. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just, if, if you're playing at five eleven, one sixty three, 163 and you're going to be in a shutdown role, that's, that's, you know, he's probably on. Well, let's, I'm going to see if I can update it. Uh, yeah. I don't think uh, I'm sure I'll he's not one sixty three he's... after a yeah. summer of training, but they, I say there is no chance in hell that Kubalik is not a lock on that third line, no matter what kind of camp he has. You like, kind of have to. I know you have if to. You're, yeah. Like Pierre and everybody that made that trade, that's what you have to show for Alex to bring it and the draft pick that's going to come, whether it's Detroit, whether it's Boston's, but yeah. Kubalik is going to get, it's, it's a little more difficult now that Tarasenko is here, but I think he's a lock on that third line. I think so too. No and matter. I think he's a lock on that second power play with the one timer that he's shown. Cause he scored a lot of goals off that one. Yeah. He can shoot it. eh? Oh yeah. Yeah. He can hum it. Um, at at 2.5 million, by the way, he's not going to be sitting. No, he's not going to be sitting thing. because you, 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 he's what you got in the return for to bring it like, yeah. but, but yeah. he's, but, I, but again, though, Dominic Kubli can, he can play. I for sure. I, I don't he's know that he's wildly player. consistent, yeah. but he can play like yeah. he's a top nine player. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, why I was, we were just skipping over that. Cause I just don't see any way that he's not there now. Uh, two things. One Ridley Greg on NHL.com is listed at one eighty three, So you can get okay. off my back now. Um, <laughs> t- two <laughs> is uh, the there's uh, somebody's going to emerge from camp as a surprise. Exactly. There always is one, right? Yeah. I think it's going to be a, like, so Igor Sokolov to me and I went and saw him uh, skate uh, two days ago. I got the, Wally Vision you, camera video. Do you have the too. beard and glasses and top hat on? Uh, no, <laughs> he no, he, but he is an RFA, and I don't know how well this is going. I'm told it's. I don't know when he like may sign because it's. It, it doesn't seem to be close. But uh, Igor Sokolov Wally? has been here all summer long. Yeah, all right. He came in the stone trade, right? Uh, yeah. I, uh I'll look it up. I'm partially pretty- but he's part of the mark Mathot trade uh I, he anyway i'll go back and tell you how this all works out um why can't you do any work before you come on the show well you're supposed to know these things that's what you i do know it but off the, i was on a train of thought and now you've, right, you've keep taken- going <laughs> point is uh igor sokolov has been here all summer he has trained his ass off to try and get a spot he's 63 uh Sorry, he's six foot three, six foot four. He has given everything he can to be in this lineup. And yeah. I, I think if he can show enough speed that he has a chance, he, he doesn't mind hitting either. He can play that game. Yeah. Great size on him. Uh, so uh, Wright's traded from the Vegas Golden Knights with Oscar Lindbergh and Eric Brandstrom to Ottawa yeah. for Mark Stone and Tobias right Lindbergh. On. But before that, his draft pick was traded from Dallas and the rights to Dylan Ferguson to uh, Vegas for Mark Mathot. Oh, okay. yeah. That's why I, I always remember the meth part of that. Um, 
Yeah. So and I don't. Sok- and, and Sokolov, like he's a second round draft pick. So that's, I know he's not a first round, yeah. but that's that's still a, a pretty high pick. Um, I know you got him in the trade, but yeah, no, I I I think there's a there's going to be a battle for that. Um, you know, the, the camp usually one or two spots are up for grabs, and I agree. Like it's it's right there for him. I liked how he yeah. looked last year. Like he he looked pretty good. He looked like a guy. Looked like a guy that's had some success in the minors and uh, can score, and that's the nice thing. If 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 you can score, and all of a sudden you add a little physicality to your game, yeah, it's because that's the thing. Sokolov has what Parker Kelly doesn't have, which is more skill, and he's yeah. bigger. You just yes. you just you just got to play with that mindset, and and if you do that, DJ and the coaching staff will 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 love that. So it's right there. He's not going to fight. We well, don't have to fight, but you just have to finish and play physical and. And win foot races and all that good stuff. And hey, coaches take notice. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt that he's in the conversation. I think it, I think for me, it comes down to him and Greg, uh, Greg, sorry. Um, and here's the other thing when you're looking at these guys in the bottom six, most of your PK time is going to come out of there. You're going to have some, some yeah. of your top six that's going to work in, but you need guys that can kill penalties. Parker Kelly does a great job of that. Yeah. But I, I don't see a, it's not out there for Parker Kelly to start as the 13th forward either. If, if somebody outplays him and moves him in, I, I know DJ loves him. I love him. I think the team loves him. The guys in the room seem to like him. He seems oh. to fit, fit the group. I don't, you know, I don't know him for more than hello and a couple of, you know, um, camps and things with them, but I always remembered him as a guy that played hard, did not mind doing the dirty work. So at the very, very least, he's your 13th forward and somebody bumps him out for a little bit. Yeah. But those guys, that that fourth line left wing is going to be ever interchanging this year, I think. I, I remember games last year when he'd always catch my eye as a guy that would, you could tell he was he was giving everything he had uh, and just kind of like a coach's, not a coach's dream, but somebody the coach will use an example. You lose, you're like, we all work like Parker Kelly, we'd have more success. Like one of those yes. mentalities. Yes. So that sounds like Tom Pyatt to me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, by the way, this Kelly's, is Igor Sokolov. Kelly's, Kelly's way t- grittier. Way grittier. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I agree. Uh, Tuesday, uh, Sokolov going one-on-one with uh, Anton Forsberg. Forsberg looks good too. So um, I want to get to that after, but yes, he, he yeah. looks very good. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, Igor got through that quick and, and th- this is just them, you know, messing around at the end having some fun but that's a great he's got a great move um speaking as a guy that was a big right hander like he can he can change his angles quite a bit he's he's dangerous i would it's a shame the power play is so good because that would be another great place for him to be hey we got a fourth line guy but he's a great power play guy there's guys that have made yes. careers doing that but um i i just like his he gives hey. you so many different dynamics that you can plug and play in different areas so if he can have a good camp where he looks defensively reliable. It's going to go a long way. I know this isn't on the nerd report, and I'm I'm, <laughs> pulling, I'm pulling something out of left field on you here, Wally. So here prepare prepare for this. I, 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 is the summer over? Speaking of the power play, and and we talked about Kubalik. If if you do the numbers, and let's just say on your first power play, you got Kachuk, you got Norris, you got Batherson. Um, You've got uh, Shabbat on the on the point, and you've got uh, who am I missing? Stutzla. Stutzla. So then, on your second unit, you've got, you're going to have you're going to have Giroux for sure. You're going to have Ter- Tarasenko for sure, and uh, Kubalik. Well, there's I miss I'm missing somebody. Batherson, here. Norris. Yeah, I got all. I and, you, and, you're, and and the way that the, the way the blue line is set up for the for the senators, you're going to have to go two defensemen on that second unit, like both both yes. Chikrin and Shabbat and Sanderson are going to have to get power play time. So you, I don't think you can roll four forwards on that second unit because you you don't you want Chikrin shot, you want Sanderson, and you want Shabbat all part of your one Wait, and two power plays. Are you taking? Are you not going to put Eric Brandstrom on the power play, which is what he's known to be able to do? Well, how's he going to? That's the, how's he going to get on the power play? Like, he's he gonna, not. He's not on the power play. <laughs> well, he's if he's not on the power play and he's a sixth D, then is there really a spot for him? Oh, he'll move the puck as your fifth six D, and that's. Hey, yeah. listen, he was traded for Mark Stone. Like you got to play him. <laughs> no, you don't. We're past that now. <laughs> yeah, that's over. Um, 
who am I missing from the top six on the second unit? Do you have G on his G? Well, on I wasn't time listening to the first one. So. Like when, how good of a job did Pinto do last year in that in that bumper position? See, he I think Tarasenko is going to slide into the bumper so G can give him that little pass that he remember that pass that he did in Philadelphia for years to whoever was in the middle. So you put him if you put G on one flank, Tarasenko in the middle. I don't know who you have at the net front. Who am I missing from the and then? You need to get a Chikrin or a Sanderson if you're going to to play the flank. And I don't think Sanderson can play the flank. I, I want him up top with Chikrin on the side because Chikrin's yeah. got a, a shot. He's got a bomb. But then who do you put in front? Do you put Kubalik in front? <laughs> that's the thing, right? What are you doing with that shot? Who's I your shooter? That's, you, we well, doing? no, I mean, if you put Sokolov in front, then you have a right and right connection. Here we go. I'll do some... Okay. Can we not have saved this for Monday? I like that, though. That's a good setup. All right, Because the rest of your top six is in the mix on the first unit. Sure. But, you, but then you get Sokolov and G. They can trade passes like Stoner and I did on that on that right side with a left-handed guy that can bomb the puck in the middle of the Tarasenko. Yeah. Um, so and then you got, off. you know, I'm assuming Pinto is not playing. <laughs> so, um, Oh, there you go. Might get an I'm, opportunity. I'm starting with what we got. And I, yeah. I think Chikrin can play a flank. Absolutely. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, yeah. Do you we give, get back to the forwards or we just carry on with your guys's? We'll just finish with this. G's got four. <laughs> G's got three left-handed guys to dish to three options. And you can only take away two. He's got three good one-timers there, but yeah. Like That's just me, and I don't. I, I I'd have to take a pay cut to go over there and run the power play with all that money that Wally's giving me. <laughs> people are still people are still upset. You're you're costing the Sens cap space, but so if, if you could just donate it back to Shane Pinto, that'd be great. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Uh, Dude, I forgot good. about that. <laughs> when when's payday start? <laughs> it's got to be October first or fifteenth. It's usually right. It's usually the day of the f two or three days before the first regular season game of whoever, whoever it is. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So I, by the way, I just want to quickly tap on the other side of this is Tyler Boucher. Um, yeah. He's a guy that's also been uh, working his butt off skating a lot. Um, and his release is outstanding. I really hope that he gets a shot here in training camp to see what he can do. I'd like to see him in the lineup with some guys that he can play with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's healthy now for, so he's healthy. I, I, I'm really excited to see how he like to see him a hundred percent and see what he's got. And he's, there's a guy that plays physical too, right? Like oh yeah. He, he runs around and, you know, I'll, I'll be interested to see how he, when he gets into some exhibition games, what kind of, Oh, I, I assume he'll play with that with that type of physicality, which is you need yep. that on your bottom six. So he'll be interesting. Honestly, he looks I, really good. I felt bad for him playing in auto, like with the sixty set. He was he was getting penalties and suspensions for hitting too hard. <laughs> that's all. That, like most of those hits were clean. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's like, like that's the way the OHL is now. If you hit a guy too hard, you're out. Yeah, you're, you're going to the box and you're probably getting suspended. I can't wait to see him run around, honestly. And he's, I thought, was it the World Juniors where he was incredible? I thought he was great yep. at the World Juniors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, uh, I think he's a good player. He's just, he's just been hampered by some injuries and he's played in a league that he's probably too strong for yes. in the OHL. And I'm excited for him to see pro hockey. Yeah. So I'm at uh, one of the games. I think they're playing against Mark Savard and the Windsor Spitfires. Mm -hmm. uh, he cuts a guy off going behind the net and, crushes him into the boards shoulder basically shoulder to shoulder but obviously when he's coming at you you get head against the glass but they it stopped the game it was so loud it stopped the game they gave him a five minute major but they reviewed it and realized it wasn't a penalty at all did they did they bring it back they rescinded it yeah five but minutes for being too too strong <laughs> he hit a guy too hard and and stopped the game i love it i think he's gonna man i all American players want American young guys to have success. Excuse me. Okay. Um, but I just, the last couple of years, I just felt bad for him. I'm like, he's, he's yes. too strong to be there and he can't play in the NHL yet. And he's just not, he's hampered. Yep. Um, I hope he, I hope he makes the team or he at least puts himself in a great place out of camp. Cause that's, you can, a lot of those times guys on two ways, aren't going to make a team out of camp. 
but you can absolutely get cut for the year out of camp if you don't have a good camp. Well, right? put it this way: if yeah. if if Boucher comes in and he plays that style in preseason, you you get a fourth line with Kastelik that's six foot four, uh, great on draws, physical, and you got Big McEwen on the other side, and and Boucher's Boucher's running around like that. Yeah. Will you want to have an energy line? Yeah. Like that has a lot of elements, and if something goes down and, and, and Boucher runs somebody over, McEwen's right there. Like that's got a lot of nice intangibles to it if you put those three together. Absolutely. And I'd like to see Boucher succeed because I, he's unfair. He's now going to for the rest of his life be unfairly pigeonholed because he was a tenth overall pick. Whether yeah. he should have been in that spot or not, it's not his <laughs> fault. But because they was in that spot, he gets looked at differently. And oh, I want to see him. I agree. I'll never, I'll, I'll never, I'll game. never say, "Oh, the poor guy is a tenth overall pick." <laughs> yeah, oh, the poor guy. Fair enough. But but when you're 18 or 17 and you're getting vilified on social media for something you had no control over, that's yeah, not fair. It's tough. You got to stay off social media if if you're in that position. You're a kid. You're on social media. Not all of them. Only Sidney Crosby, who has like a burner account. You sure he's got a burner? Yes. I don't know. I'm nearly. Bob, were, you, were you checking the social media after games and stuff? Not, not really. No. Um, mostly, I guess I did. I guess I did in Anaheim a little bit because it was you flew under the radar. You know how that goes. Um, but no, not not too much in Ottawa. And then a lot of times I would make a post without reading what was said. I, you know, great win, great energy, whatever. And then you don't read the mentions, but. Um, and then I started to do it and I was just getting absolutely assaulted whether I scored or didn't. So I was like, I got to get off this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something, something wrong. Absolutely attack a 19 year old kid that just wanted to borrow a chew. <laughs> like, I can't do it. I got to get off. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't a big social media guy. No, I've always had, you know, the private Instagram and now I'm a public for the show. That's because I'm just drawing viewers. Wally. Yeah. Uh, but do you I, even I'm, tweet about the show? No, I, We'll no, <laughs> no. I'll throw a repost out there for you every now and again, but I'm, I don't check Twitter. I check Instagram a little bit, but not Twitter. Yeah, I get Dorky, a direct message you... from coming in hot once a day that I got mentioned <laughs> in their story. <laughs> That's on Gavin. Okay, don't oh. don't blame me for any part of the show. All right, except, <laughs> okay. except the nerd report. Um. I, so and, anyway, I, I the Boucher part, I would like to see him succeed. Also, um. Mm -hmm. Uh, just back to Boko Mama for a sec, because not a lot is known about him. Um, just nine NHL games, 230 pounds or 220, I guess he is. He's fought two guys in the NHL. Now, they're listed as fights, but uh, if you look at the video, not not the greatest. Uh, he he goes after Ryan Reeves. Uh, there wasn't really much of a, a fist thrown there. And then he fought uh, Boro, Mark Borowiecki. Mm -hmm. Boro kind of filled him in. But my point is, He's in the league six games in, and he's dropping the gloves with Ryan Reeves. It means he is committed, and I give him credit for standing up and mm -hmm. throwing down. Hey, yeah, hey, takes a lot of a lot of balls to do that. Drop the gloves with Reeves, like that's that's yeah. a guy that knows what he's doing. But listen, yeah. if you want to settle this and, and you want to just vie for those last three spots on any given team, just do what they did in my junior A team, my first year junior camp. You know what they did? Listen to this. Pillow Forge. They made a circle, and you had to go inside the circle and basically wrestle a guy and fight him on the grass. And then if you won, you moved on and you fought the next guy. And then the winner of the day then had to fight the coach. Great times. Fight Are you a kidding me? I'm, I'm not joking. And then here's the, he goes, all right, you guys. He basically goes, called us a bunch of words. If anybody fights at training camp, I want you to go to center ice and the other eight guys on the ice, you form a circle around the center ice and don't let them out. And you're fighting like men, like gladiator. What is going on? It oh, that's the jungle. Insane. Completely insane. That's what my parents dropped me off. I was 17 years old. They dropped me off. Have a nice day in the OHL. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're watching. I walked uh, into that dog show. League's changed, eh, buddy? <laughs> the, speak, there's two things about the... Uh, I was going to bring this up in another show, but since you started in it, uh, summer skates. They never used to be... I'll say in the last 10 years, perhaps, they never used to be like they are now with 
it's almost like a full team is in town a month before training camp yeah. starts where they're all skating now. Yeah. We never had that. Uh, I mean, you never showed up, but all yeah. the 19 other guys did. Well, that's because I start. I mean, I started when that wasn't the case. Guys were coming into their houses for I w- I came into the oldest team in the league too, right? Give or take at that yeah, time. Veteran won a cup. Yeah. And those guys, you know, even for years after that, guys weren't coming in until the 1st of September, you know, the 5th of September, because then you still had a week and a half till camp. Oh. And it's like, how long do you need to be there for? But um, I, I, I just think the team here really gels together. They hang out. They're all young, right? Yep. They're all yep. in that stage of life where when I started, it wasn't the same. So um, I love that they're there. I love that it sounds like they're ready. It sounds like they're sick of losing and not being in the playoffs. And I, I, I'm i hoping for a great year because it would make our show a lot more fun. <laughs> do, you, do you think Mark Stone rubs off on Brady uh, to help lead that group that way? of enough is enough let's get it going here probably to a degree but those that's two different types of leaders and two different types of players right you have one in mark who's very cerebral and and probably leads his room very quietly um you know outside of talking when he needs to be saying something and right brady's a little more raw raw because he's a little more in your face and he plays that style and I'm sure he's got guys' ears a little more than Stoner has to, right? And you're talking about a team that's trying to make the playoffs versus a team that just won a cup in that leadership role. Um, but I'm sure, like, I'm absolutely positive that Brady calls him and asks him questions about the pulse of the room, what what to say to the coach. I think people yeah. people forget sometimes that Brady's just 24. He's a 98. Yeah, I mean, whatever that that puts him at. It's a young guy to be a captain of a team that's on the up and up and coming together. And you've seen Gabe Landeskog did it. Jonathan Taze did it. Um, He's 23. But Sid Sid had Mario Lemieux. Yeah. So Brady, but Brady's got the pedigree. He calls his dad for things. I'm sure Um, he's got all the right people around him, And, um, and, and the guys follow him and he can drag you. He'll drag your team into a game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. uh, Stoner's, had some conversation i agree bob and uh what a good guy stoner hey how about that interview that was fantastic the other day by the way guys that was uh yeah i, I got so much time for stoner i got to spend a couple days with him last actually played again played again yesterday got into his pocket bob a boy got, got into those long pockets That's, they're long they're deep <laughs> <laughs> they're full also yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but just a great, great uh, guy great guy wait, wait a sec was this the group of you switch after every six holes no, it was uh, it was Alfie and me versus Stoner and CC. Um, stayed with the partners for the whole day. But crazy game, eight point game. Um, so much I don't even know. It's like one point for birdie, one point closest to the pin, one point for all wow. kinds. Of, I just let me know at the end of the day what I owe. I'm that guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, who's the biggest competitor between Mark Stone and Daniel Alfredson? Is he even close? Alfie's dialed on the golf course. He's dialed. He's dialed at anything. He's yeah. dialed. He's just he. He's playing great golf. I'll tell you that, man. Great golf. Shot seventy two the other day. Wow. 70, yeah, he's dialed. But Stoner's uh, man. Can he hit the ball though? Bob, you played them before. He, he can hammer it. Bombs it. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Just rips right through it. Um. But you know, it's 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 all in fun. Like we're not playing for a lot of money. It's just uh, it's it's a good time. But no, I agree. That's a great mentor for Brady. Yeah. Um. And and you could tell he's. He's had some words of wisdom for him. All right. So uh, last thing before we go, I got a little video. Uh, I meant to, I apologize. Someone on Instagram reached out to me uh, and I'd forgotten about this, Bob. And so it is a play between <laughs> you and Drew Doughty. And I want, I want to know if you oh. remember this. So uh, Gavin, uh, don't speak. Cause there's some audio here guys to do the moving around. Oh, you mean Brent Burns? Oh, is it Burnsy? Martin couldn't clear it. And then Bobby Ryan got hit by a. <laughs> so the other guys yeah, I just hear you yell. Around. Yeah, listen again. Martin <laughs> couldn't clear it. And then Bobby Ryan got hit by a. <laughs> it's the best. You get I'm... hit twice? No. So, uh, Burnsy, the, they win the draw, and Burnsy's trying to get out of the way for the guy that iced the puck, and he hits Burnsy in the back of the leg, and you just hear, oh, Fuck. And then he turns around and whacks and hits me and you hear, Oh fuck again. <laughs> like I get sent this all the time, but when you play, it's hilarious. Um, I remember awesome. talking to Bernsey about it because we, you know, not close, but buddies. Um, 
and I remember talking to him about it. I was like, do people send you that? And he's like, I get it all the time. So and that was, this was a little while ago, but um, yeah, I get that once a month. It'll slide into my DMs. A fan sending me that, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> watch your, watch your mouth. And I'm like, what a great clip. So uh, can you take, I, I know I can see the video, but can you take me through this between the two of you? And was there any discussion on the ice afterwards? Neither one of us knew um, whatsoever that it had happened until after the fact. Um, I didn't hear him say it. It was just, it was such a quick hockey play that neither one of us knew until somebody was like hot mics on Burns and Ryan say the exact same thing. Two seconds apart. <laughs> it is, but yeah, no idea. I do remember I was there in that building. Like you could hear it in the press box. It was oh, so loud. Was it wasn't really. Yeah. yeah. I had let's no clue. Keep, let's keep no that clue. sound bite for the show. <laughs> <laughs> when, the t- when the two of you look at the nerd report. <laughs> done basic, yeah oh fuck all right uh we're back monday that's it we're done yeah Got- well if i leave any more then i won't have a show for monday because you already went through the power play so forget Whoa. that we'll uh we'll discuss the d or so oh uh jonas corpusalo is in town he was in town on tuesday for the first time i do have video of that we can uh show on uh monday as well beautiful so do a goalie scouting report and get back to me on Monday. I was going to say, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I, uh, see you, boys. Have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you, guys. Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.